is a Cosmic Octave original podcast. Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. I'm, not weed. me. I'm or, married. Yeah, well, I'm married. Jake. Yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off topic with Jake and Tyler. So loud. What's up, everybody? It's episode 125. I'm Tyler. I'm Jake. Off panel, off topic yeah. with Jake and Tyler. So. Today's episode, I want to get it off on uh, a, a, a serious note. I want to talk about indoctrination of our youth, mm. of, of kids, mm-hmm. particularly my it's kid. It's hot topic right now. I am indoctrinating him in the world of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, it's, no, that's good. Well, he's getting to an age where he's starting to notice things, and I think, yes, uh, it helps. There's... Hey, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There's a reason why superhero costumes are brightly colored. Because, obviously, that's going to attract kids' attention. Uh, like, the other night, um, I was I had uh, Luke over. We were playing Rocket League. And mm-hmm. he, like, was watching the whole time. Like, he was inter- so inter- And I think, because I feel <laughs> the way that boys... And just kids in general, it's like, okay, a little boy, you're going to like trucks and sharks and dinosaurs. That's going to be your clothing options Mm -hmm. and sports teams, Mm -hmm. superheroes. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's in like a truck phase. So I think it was the cars hitting the ball was like, like glued him to it. And then, yeah, the indoctrination of Spider-Man, I put the shirt on him (laughs) and he is immediately drawn to it. He just goes this, this. And I'm like, Spider-Man. I'm still drawn to, like, brightly colored shit. I, I gotta be... But when I said it was Spider-Man, he, like, laughed. Yeah. Because he had seen me play the game before. Well, so... Uh, so, yeah. yeah. I'm no, indoctrinating I, my kid in Spider-Man. I, and you know what? There's a good kind of indoctrination, and that's what that is. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I'll be walking, like, down, like, you know, the aisle of a store, and it'll be a new product that I absolutely do- didn't want, and I absolutely don't need. Mm-hmm. But it's colored in a certain way, or it's got the words ranch or... Or Cajun, or you know, Peanut garlic, butter. or whatever on it, and I'm like fucking drawn to it. Like, oh, I want to get that because. Wait, know, wait, what's it. what's what's on the labels? French. What? Uh, or garlic. What? Or Cajun. What? Or cheddar. What? Yeah, I can't help it, man. It's now that I got the Stone Cold one back, we're we're fucking cooking. Brother. I don't even want to eat Twix Mini, like our Trix Mini Minis. I love Twix. Trix. Oh, Trix too. The cereal. That's, uh, oh man, I don't, don't do it. It's a trap. I don't want to eat the Minis. It's too good. It's what too the good. fuck is the deal with the Minis, by the way? Anyway, I'm indoctrinating my kid into Spider-Man. What's the deal with the Mini cereal? I don't know. Why are you asking me like I'm a representative of Kellogg? Because you like it. You like I've never General had Mills. It. <laughs> I'm just, I've never. My point is, is that even though I don't want to eat them, I want to because uh, I'm I'm so into capitalism. And and I know somebody's gonna be like, oh fucking boo, do the whole, you know. <sighs> Ew, fuck you. That's I'm what just the right saying, wing is saying right now, and I'm that's just fine. Saying right now, Lincoln and I, we're having some fun with Spider Man. That's cool. Whip, whip, mean? swing the web. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about uh, uh, Let's talk about something stuff. that's not fun We're going to jump right into the Griff Report Oh god It's time to cover some assholes Hey Should that be the new one? No Why? I'll come up with some Well you can't say asshole if we're going to clip it on YouTube They're, mm. big, they're big sticklers about swearing uh, But any At fucking way At least in way, the first what? <laughs> like 30 seconds we're past the, well, We have the, a fucking timer the, on the YouTube clip. We, you don't see I'll it in it. our videos. You don't see it, but uh, right behind when can the we video, say fuck counter? Yeah, <laughs> it, it literally says when can we say fuck, and then there's a big like four. <laughs> it's like a, it's you know what we, what it was when they tore down the old giant stadium, the old Meadowlands. Um, we went ahead and stole one of the uh, the big the big clocks, the big, play the, clock. big uh, the the play clock. So it's it's really weird because. Um, it's not meant to be inside of yeah. a house. So, so we literally about, had to like move the staircase. Let's talk about and call uh, a contract. I know you're trying real hard not to talk about this, but we're gonna have to talk about it. Tyler. Fuck. I like how you're just like I'm gonna steamroll this segment so we don't. He'll forget. He'll forget. So Daily Wire. Ugh. 
Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring owned a uh, media company, which uh, before we even talk about this, we're going to be talking about Lady Ballers, their anti-trans comedy. Um, keep in mind, everybody involved in this movie is a failed shithead actor. Is a shithead turned right wing media star should get a different job and fucking understand you're not going to make it in Hollywood. Stop it. There's a reason you didn't go it. home and get a fucking job at like fucking Hy-Vee or wherever the fuck and just work there because you're not going to be an actor. You're not going to be. A, you're failed. You failed. I don't care that you're in a movie. Yeah. You shouldn't care that you're in a movie. You shouldn't tell anybody that you're in this movie. It, it, you know how people like. The people that are in this movie, when their parents like ask them, like, "Hey, what's going on with you know the acting and stuff?" It, it should feel the same. Like, I don't want to, and I don't think porn stars should be shamed for doing porn. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't think they should. But a lot of them probably still don't tell their parents or whatever. That's the way you should feel if you're in this movie. It's really you uh, should feel like sloppy. Yeah. Well, any anyway, yeah, it's it, but that's my point. Is everybody involved in this movie is not an actor? The, there's one comedian, air quotes, because I think they like blew up on TikTok, and it's like I don't even know who. Like I don't even remember their name, mm. but it's again filled with people that are Daily Wire hosts. the t- The main team consists of the three hosts of their right wing sports show. God. Kane and Company or oh whatever, because oh it's God. two brothers, uh, uh, and then there's one other dude. And <laughs> talk about a third wheel. The coach of this team, the guy that's in a majority of the trailer, the lead of this of this movie. Mm. I wish I was making this name up. Jeremy Boring, who is the co-founder of Daily Wire, is the writer. One of the I'm sure he's one of the writers, but he's the director and the star of this movie. Oh, wow. I'll bet you he was a super pleasant dude to be with on set. Because not only is he your boss on your just regular day-to-day job, now he's your boss on a movie that is supposed to be funny. I can't imagine how many women he, like, uh, like, uh, um, what was, what's the word I'm looking for? Harassed? Hit, hit on. Oh. Or, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that if you're a woman that you're joining up with this production and, and you're not thinking of... I don't know. I don't so I don't think your movie career is Here's worth what frustrates me about this movie. Here's what frustrates me Dealing with men like this. I don't is, know. I'm not a woman. I haven't looked into if Geeks and Gamers or if... Because they cover... I know that they did like Nerd Rotic and Geeks and Gamers and then did a bunch of stuff with Terror on the Prairie. I don't know if they've done it for this movie. You keep saying but, that. What is that? It's the fucking Gina Carano movie that was a Daily Wire that oh. sucked dick. That, by the way, so yes, it was le- released on their streaming service, but you know, even Netflix releases movies in, in theaters sometimes, right? And even those make a little bit of money. This movie, when it was released in theaters, made eight hundred dollars. Tear on the we talked about that. So yeah. yeah, um, so I don't know if they're covering this movie, but they're fucking hypocrites. Because if they don't cover this and treat this with the same vitriol and anger that they treated that latest Doctor Who special because they claimed it was pushing an agenda, motherfucker, this is going to be a 90-minute agenda. Mm. And it's going to be one stupid joke for 90 minutes. 90 minutes of this. Mm. And I'm sorry, that trailer was three minutes. It felt like 10. Absolutely. We've got racism twice. At least. Because he's talking about to a black kid, and then he says, please don't just steal my catalytic converter. Now, maybe he doesn't say that in the movie, but it sure as hell edited like it in the trailer. And then we have a black player. He gets his pants pulled down, and they say, that's the biggest dick I've ever seen on a lady. It's like... It's two really bad jokes in one. It's transphobic, and it's racist. Yay! Because it's implying the stereotype that it, black dudes have big dicks or whatever. Like, it's just... <sighs> So stupid. I, I I don't. I understand. Like okay. This is a far smaller scale, but the other night I went to a uh, a book club social at the uh, West Des Moines Public Library, and it was fun. And it was I sat down and and within the first five minutes of getting there, I probably showed up about ten minutes early. I had this feeling, and it was like, should I be here? Like I'm really not 
you know, I, I don't know if I fit in. I'm not like an old, older married lady because that's kind of who it was made up of and stuff. And I could have stood up and been like, I don't know if this is for me and left. And probably it would have been okay, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But that anxiety about being, about possibly looking like an asshole or like, why would I want to introduce negativity in these people's lives that I don't know? I get that anxiety. I understand that every actor on this fucking movie, hopefully, if you're human, had a moment where they were like, Jesus fucking Christ, I don't know if I can do this. I might just have to leave set. Yeah. You fucking should have, okay? You fucking should have. Well, and the fact that you didn't means your movie career, your dreams about being an actor, because you're a shitty one, because this is the only one you can get, are, are awful. You are willing to go... You're willing to sacrifice everything for a fucking movie career? You're awful. But they throw a fit because a character says they're non-binary in the Doctor Who thing. Again, I don't watch Doctor Who and I don't care about Doctor Who, but I'm just saying, if you're going to put out fucking videos about putting agenda before storytelling, why aren't you talking about this movie? Oh, that's right, because it plays into your narrative and your fucking anti-trans grift. And it's like, again... Yeah, if anything, just, these guys should be coming out and supporting this movie. We did a, we did a re- react... Because they're shitheads. We did, and a, they're, yeah. we did a react video for our YouTube, and you said <laughs> that there's violence towards women immediately. And there immediately, is. yes. And even given and the context of laughs. it trying to be s- absurd and satire, it's like, you're still... You, you, it just It's not funny. Because you are still punching down. Comedy works effectively when you're punching up. Yes. Everybody keeps wanting to reference in Carlin all the time, and it's like, yeah, because he got it, because he understood that it's not funny to attack an already oppressed group and kick someone while they're down. Yes. It's not fucking funny. Hmm. It's funny when you make fun of fucking Elon Musk being a complete utter moron. Yeah. It's funny when you make fun of Bill Gates. It's funny when you make fun of these you know, it's Bezos. It's funny when you make fun of Ben Shapiro. B- yes. You know why? Because he makes a bunch of money spending, spreading hate. Yeah. And he's a fucking And you want to talk about a disgusting reaction. It, he like The way that he talks about this whole conflict in the Middle East is disgusting. But that's for another topic for another day. I don't think oh, we'll and, ever and cover. You know what? The fact that Ted Cruz is in it at all... Ted Cruz, and by the way, what's the fucking joke with Ted Cruz being in it? Because he shows up. It's a Me Too joke. Because there's a girl sitting there, and he's like, "Are those seats taken?" And she looks all fucking pissed, and they're like, "Sorry, you didn't get that." Like a cat, like you didn't get that sound effect. No, that's what I mean. That's not a joke. No, I know that, but that's that's what what I'm saying. What's the joke, Tyler? Because it's not a fucking joke. I know what the the intended joke is, but it's not funny. Look, I am not a professional comedian. I'm not trying to lord over what's funny and what's comedy. Everything's subjective, whatever. But. I am telling you when you would again when you try would you do the same one note joke for 90 minutes I don't care how good the joke is at first it's not going to work If I'm in public and I, I for some reason I'm like you know hey um say I see like I'm at you know grocery store and there's a, a lady who's like wow she's attractive or whatever I I can smile and say hi that's about you know in a public place that's about as you know, as forward as you really want to be and not seem like a fucking creepy weirdo, right? Right? Yeah. Um, you can gauge a lot. Like, you can pretty much gauge from the reaction to that normal greeting, the smile and hi, or whatever, or how's your day, whatever. You can gauge that and be like, okay, I don't need to talk to that woman again yeah. and, and clearly does not want me to. You know what I mean? It's I don't know why men don't get this. I don't know why men don't understand that if you say hi and, and walk by a woman and she says nothing, that's okay, guys. It's fine. But, like, most of this movie seems to be made by guys who, like, get pissed off when they go, you'd be prettier if you smiled more to, to, to a lot of women. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, it's and, just, and what, it, is, what is wrong with these men? Were, there, were their mothers just absent? Or, I mean, they just did not learn also, respect for also, women or human? Also, make... Time out. Pick a fucking lane. Yeah. Are, right? we, are we saying that you care about women's sports or, or are that we you not? hate women? Because you make you're... a joke that nobody's in the arena to watch it. Right. Yes. Yes. Do we have the yes on there? Because that's exactly. 
Yes. I felt like I just sounded yes! exactly like the sound. Yes. <laughs> Didn't I? Yeah. But see, yeah. No, but pick a lane. But, but yeah, exactly. So you're either anti-trans or anti-women. You cannot really be both, dude. Oh, guess who's in you this? You can't really guess be both. Guess who makes a cameo in this? Who? Riley Gaines. Oh, that you piece remember, of shit. You remember that? I know that piece of shit. Riley. Who is a bad, who, bad athlete? Not good. Finished fifth. Yeah. Sucks ass. With Leah. Kim fifth. Reynolds' fucking buddy. Yeah. So she made a whole... She got fifth, but she was smart enough to play these fucking right-wing games. These fucking and now idiot she right-wingers is in like a harp. You got played like a harp by a... You know what? This will make him mad. You got played like a harp by a girl. Yeah. Because huh? Leah is a girl. So fuck you. Yeah. No, but Riley <laughs> Gaines can fuck right off, dude. That fucking opportunistic piece of shit. You're fucking... You're not a good athlete. You're not good at it. But instead of being like, oh, hey, you know, maybe I just need to, you know, uh, uh, understand that, like, I got a good education and then, like, go with what my int- your, your your dream wasn't to be an athlete, was it? I mean, because if it was, oops, you failed. Sorry to be a dick about it, but, you know, hey, at some point you got to realize you know, you're not going to you get your dream. I heard was uh, surprisingly a really good athlete. Hmm. Tiki Watiti. No shit. <laughs> and I said, what? And then I, th- I then I said I think I would like to. <laughs> Why'd you say it? It's too far away. Where is it? I don't know. It's fine. Having sex. Yes. With <laughs> That's what I'll be like doing. Um, uh, so wrapping it up. No, but but again, you 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 can't be both. You can't be sitting there making fun of how women's sports are are are, are not watched as much as men's. And then also and then be the, angry uh, that there are men and women. Sp- like, fucking pick a fucking asshole. Oh, yeah, pick an asshole. Pick a fanatic cause and stick with it, you fucking loser. Pick a fucking losers. and toss it, you know? Wow. <laughs> what? Pick a salad and toss it. <laughs> Take it however you want. I was talking about actual <laughs> lettuce. You disgusting pigs. What? I'm disgusted with all of you. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, fuck, fuck, fuck you, Daily We're Wire. We're not going to watch it. We're not no, going to watch no, it. No, I don't. Not even for content. You don't deserve my time. We couldn't even time. make it five minutes through, what was it, Moesha? Moesha. Remember that, yeah. I couldn't even make it five minutes. As soon as I saw what they said was a bar in a movie, I'm like, that's not a fucking bar. That's a room with a bunch of what? kids. That's what you kept saying. It did it? In this movie, you were just thinking, can we have a little bit of a... Pew, pew, quip, pew, pew, quip. Like I like. Okay, moving on. I got what I paid for. Tubi. That should be their slogan. (laughs) I got what I paid for. (laughs) Anyway, let's... (laughs) You're disgusting. I'm so dang funny. Uh, we got You're s- disgusting. We got some rumors to talk about. Oh, we're in the rumor mill. Ow. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, as you know, uh, Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, lost its director recently. Mm. Um, they also had a different writer on this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the plan uh, originally was going to have Michael Rald- Waldron, who... Created Loki. He was also the writer on Multiverse of Madness. Mm-hmm. So um, he was just he was already going to write Secret Wars. So now they're adding him to make it to be the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So he's going to write both movies. That makes sense, and it'll uh, hopefully add some continuity. Well, and I think I don't think they're going to do this. Kang's done. We're going to do Doctor Doom thing. I don't necessarily buy into that. Is that what the rumor is? But there, because of Jonathan Majors. Well, it's with that Variety article coming out. That was yeah. That was the the idea was like they were just gonna kill off Kang and do Doom. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I don't necessarily believe in that. But I think there is going there are some creative changes happening because usually if a director leaves a Marvel project, it's creative differences. So I mean, proofs in the pudding. Doctor Strange. Uh, you could also Ant Man. Mm-hmm. So I'm imagining that's what's happening. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because I don't think there was any bad blood between them. There was nothing bad about it. I think he just, they, he moved on to something else. And I think a lot of it, and you know, 
<clears throat> I think a lot of it has to do with COVID and delays and then the strikes and then the the, the trying to figure this shit out. The I'm world just... is vastly different from the one that that Endgame came out in. Yeah. I mean, it, it's what, f- what is, how many years ago now? Six? Five? Four. I mean, we're night and day. It'll be, it'll be five this coming year. It was before COVID. Yeah. Um. And and you think about that more. I think more than anything is how vastly and different the world is, whether you like it or not. Now than it was then, is has got to subconsciously have an effect on fans of the MCU and critics, uh, in the respect that like it's too disjointed. Whatever we've talked about this multiple times. The first phase was disjointed. You know, the second one was too. Right. Um, it didn't get really cohesive until recently. after the second Avengers, because that's when Feige took over completely. Oh, after I thought you were talking about now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Feige took over everything after Ultron. Yeah, I think so. Um, but <clears throat> and that's why it was so fucking cohesive for so long. And well, it's they... it started to get cohesive, and you know, I think I think Phase Four was a lot like Phase One, um, and now we're in Phase Five, and I think now we're seeing more cohesiveness and more. You know, uh, interconnectedness like we did in, in a phase two, and that's why I think they're going to have Waldron do both. And I think that's that, that was kind of the reason. They're the uh, what the uh, guys, the Russo brothers, do Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, that made sense. Well, they actually did a couple. They did. Uh, well, they, did they did Winter Soldier, Civil America, War, yep. and then. But yeah, um, it would make it makes sense. He's been in the system. You know, he like I said, he did Loki. He created Loki. He did. Multiverse of Madness. People have issues with Multiverse of Madness. I, per, you and I both talked about it. I loved it. What do they have issues yeah. with? I mean, the the lesbian moms or what? I no, mean, I mean, what? I, come I, in, let's, it's probably well, something I, I stupid. Think it's, no, like some of the legitimate criticisms I think huh. are that it didn't feel like a. I don't think it continued the story of the first movie, and it kind of was. It, it, the first movie they don't the first Doctor it, Strange yeah the sorcerer uh Dora what's his name is D oh 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 uh, uh Mordo Mordo yeah I was thinking of Dormammu yeah <laughs> Mordo yeah okay Mordo's, so there's Mordo's arc sucks that and, and and it goes fair. nowhere okay fair because he makes a whole thing up this is the disjointedness he says he, like no more wizards and then everything gets forget like pfft, no because we got to do all this stuff and. And then we come back to it, and when we come back to Strange, like, Mordo's like an afterthought. Yes, he shows up in the Illuminati stuff, but, like... Can we just, like, it didn't, call it to like me, it is? It didn't feel like a Doctor Strange movie. It, it didn't feel like to it you? It felt like it was serving a, like... The first Doctor Strange felt like it's it was its own thing. Like, it was setting up, this is the magic, you know, this is its own thing. But then after that, he, when he started getting entangled to more of the broader MCU, I think... It kind of went away from what that first. So that, that first, first movie, that first, like, I could see. No, that I criticism. get it. I get it. But I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit on that, uh, and not bullshit because it's your opinion. But I'm going to give you a different perspective. I don't think that. Okay, I'm going to give a I'm different. Fine with I'm going to give a different perspective. Um, the first movie was uh, categorized and and uh, known by and kind of famous for all of the really elaborate CGI. Correct. In the illusions and shit right yeah that was kind of why it was its own thing and whatnot and this one wasn't so much uh does everybody remember or forgot about the part where they go through the fucking punched hole like that entire sequence where they go through all the different dimensions yeah i'm not saying hello that. i'm just saying like that might be someone's criticism my point is i like also mordo let's be honest mordo as a character is stupid He's not in the comics that much, because, and so is Doctor Fucking Strange. Whoa, hey, you're gonna get the comments. Um, Whatever, fucking Doctor Strange. <laughs> my is point in all of this was to say that I liked his work. Never sold well. Liked, I've liked his work with Marvel already. They so, tried to put him in a book with Cloak and Dagger to sell some sort of stuff, but Cloak and Dagger sucks too. Sorry. Wow. Wow. Well, they do. Wow. The Freeform show was pretty darn good, but generally. Cloak and Dagger they're is gonna, they're gonna a product of a time. Eat your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and, you're gonna, and then you're going to say, Finish it! <laughs> Finish it! <laughs> Jesus. I'm so- Spread my cheeks. Oh. Sorry. 
That's where that video should end right there. <laughs> God. Uh, no, I still had something else I was going to say to what this. What the fuck was um, that? I think you should edit all. No, I stuff. am I am excited about it. Um, but the interesting thing about going back with Waldron, so one is hold on, okay, because he's already has experience. We've already seen him do two things with the multiverse. Right, he did Loki, he did uh, Strange, but I think another little wrinkle to this. And I don't know if this is a, in, true at all. Keep in mind, all this shit is... Like, Waldron being the writer of Kang Dynasty, that's the only fact. This next part is completely speculation. Sam Raimi has been talked about to direct Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Right. We Do talked about this. Do you think Waldron working with Raimi on the last movie and him talking with Kevin again? Because, you know, he Feige worked with him in the first Spider-Man. So they already have a history together. Okay. And he talked about like how important it was him to make one of these again and come back. And we've talked about, this has already been rumored that he was going to do it for a while. Now yeah. it's rumored he's going to do both. <clears throat> do we think there's a little bit of validity with that, with uh, having Waldron being attached? Why not? I would love it. Yeah. It would be perfect. Mm. There, I don't think there's anybody more perfect for this. Because while he did not start... The modern superhero genre, X Men did like, and I'm I'm not I'm talking like in the millennium, the 21st century. Yeah. He, you could, and again, X Men started started it, but it was really Spider Man that took it to where it was, took it to these heights, or at least began. So to see that one of the guys that like brought this modern era of superheroes to see him do it again and do possibly an even bigger movie than Endgame mm -hmm. would be. Kind of perfect. Yeah. And I'm only saying that because I'm greedy and I love Sam Raimi movies and I want more Sam Raimi movies. I've always liked his movies. And I love Multiverse Madness because it felt like a Sam Raimi Marvel movie. Yes. And you know what? When you go back and you look at those Spider-Man movies, like his first movies are clearly Stanley, like Steve Ditko era Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. And Andrew Garfield, you say the Ultimates, uh, and, and then modern... Uh, post Civil War Spider Man is what kind of what Tom Holland was a little bit, yeah. But like, and seeing him do Multiverse of Madness, go, like in harkening back to his Evil Dead roots and stuff, like it would be so much fun to him do. Because let's be honest, it's a little like I'm not saying go full camp and be over the top, no. But it's he knows how to make these movies. Dude, he he knows how to make them charming. We talked about Multiverse of Madness, and one particular scene is when. He's fighting with the, the, there's some sort of demon, like a tar, like a, I don't know, some sort of demon made out of whatever, but it was just a simple thing of like the, the camera being your POV. It's a yeah. Raimi technique, yeah. you know, so it's, it looks all disjointed because it's like, you know, it, it would look like if something was attacking you, how, what your vision would be like, you'd be like, oh my God. And it's such a Raimi thing, but it worked so well. With yeah. the well, shit, fucking movie, when he does the thing with the 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 dark souls and he makes a fucking cape yeah. out of skeletons yeah. and yeah. shit, yeah, like, that was cool. I mean, that's whether you like he it or gets not. The spectacle of it, he I gets don't the pulp of right. It. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of horror movies in general. Um, I the only Evil Dead movie I've ever seen is is uh, Army of Darkness. I don't intend to see any of the other ones. <laughs> for for a second, talking to reason. me, dude. You're talking to me, one of the biggest Evil Dead fans. I know that, me. but I don't. I don't care to oh, see. Why? Anybody. Sorry, I interrupted. Why? Why? Why is it not your? Thing? I'm not into horror movies. I'm just not. I don't like them. Evil Dead Two is more of a comedy. I'm aware of that, but I just. I mean, it's just. It's not on my list of stuff to like accomplish or watch or whatever. Now, but I do enjoy one of my favorite movies of all time is Army of Darkness. It was the first Sam Raimi movie I saw. And it is almost perfect, almost pitch perfect. I don't think I could think of right now off the top of my head why it's not perfect because it's so fucking good. It is just classic. It, to me, it's from what people have told me, it's classic Raimi. And it's, uh, or rather, stuff I oh, hadn't I seen mean, before it, then. It, all this, uh, I know what classic Raimi is now, but when I saw it first, I, I didn't know who and that he, guy and was. You could see, like, his fucking Stooges inspiration. Oh, yeah. And, like, dude. It's a, yeah. There's so, because there's Stooges jokes in Evil Dead 2. There's only, like, one. 
It's where he stomps on a head, a head, and it shoots the eyeball out into someone's mouth. I, I think, but it's, like uh, this movie has more of those kind of <laughs> that's gags. Fucking great! It's amazing. I um, but uh, I love that he has his his car in every movie. He's got a weird thing about eyeballs, though. He's always got eyes and shit. Well, Quentin Tarantino's got a weird thing about feet. Well, I don't think. He, well, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, he does. Well, I'm saying, like, I mean, we're speculating. I'm just saying, I, I he just is, I think he just thinks eyes are really creepy. When like where eyes are where they shouldn't be, they're really creepy. If they're well, not that, on a it face. It is it's weird, and isn't gross. it though? It is. Do you remember the? Uh, <laughs> what, what we was got the, way up. No, no. What was the movie with uh, um, Guillermo del Toro uh, and uh, fucking? Oh, uh, it's Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. But that the creature had the eyes. Ha- and the eyes. Hands. Oh, fuck you! No, freak yeah, me out. Right? I don't watch. I want to watch the movie because of that. You, have you ever seen like a video <laughs> where somebody draws like a, a face on their forehead and they act like? Have you ever seen that? Oh like, yeah, I used to watch that. Face fucking off all the freaks time. me out, dude. That freaks me out because it's like I know that's not a face, but the eyes are upside down. Are and it's, are you so sure you weren't on crack cocaine? If you think about <laughs> yeah, if you think about, <laughs> there's a lot to when we were as a species, human beings, when we were first trying to survive, we had to have. You okay? Uh, uh, when I feel when like we're gonna get way off. I understand and just fucking go with it. <laughs> when Jeez. you're raising, when you're raising a child, you start to see like y- this child. Y- you don't remember learning all these basic things, but this child is learning all these basic things. So think about the first humans as being like us, but really young and not understanding jack shit, like pooping. Like they didn't even know how to poop. You know what I mean? Like they just came out. You know what I mean? Okay. They had to have some sort of fight or flight, and we still have that in our ourselves. You've heard about the lizard part of our brains that yeah. uh, was like a survivalist thing and, and, and caused us to do things we were way back then that we don't need to do now. Like, you know. The medulla if, oblongata. Sure, right, exactly. But there is a xenophobic reaction. Xenophobia is fear of a, a foreign entity or uh, something unknown, something un. Uh, un, unlike you, whatever, and it's called xenophobia, and we had that, and that was simply to say, "Hey, I'm a human being, and that fucking whatever that is, it's a tiger, by the way, but I don't know what it's called, but it's not a human, so I need to run." And there was that in our brain to be like, "Hey, uh, uh-uh, uh, eh, right?" Now I think it has made its way to our modern times in the form of racism, and like anti-Semitism, things like that. At one point in our existence as a species, it was necessary for survival. Okay? So there. What have to do with anything? What were we just talking about? Eyeballs! <laughs> in places that they shouldn't! So. No, do not go. I'm So. No. That is why we have problems <laughs> when we see eyeballs in different places <laughs> and things. Because even though. Xenophobia can be useful in in terms of like you know uh, making you feel weird like in the movies like you see it, eyeballs and hands that's like oh that's creepy that's useful to like filmmakers and stuff to fuck with our perceptions and things right obviously things like racism and things like that now are bad but they came from a place of our infancy as a species that helped us survive not being fucking eaten by tigers you're welcome America the tiger sees you out in the open. I'll eat your ass. <laughs> You're welcome. I hate. It. What was that? Don't do it again. I'm joking. Please. Don't do it again. Don't go on another tangent. <laughs> I'm joking. What? what? Did you say don't do it again? I'm joking. Yes, because you explained it like twice now, and I don't want you to explain it a third time. But anyway, and when you're I'm first, <laughs> you don't even know like what the moon is, what the sun what? is. You don't even have shelter. Time is you just, just a construct, you just go, bro. You just go into like fucking like caves because you don't know how to build shit for like shelter. Boring. You know. <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Okay, so where were we? We're at. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the show is over. <laughs> Really? We're packing it in. Because I don't even know what to say to you. You go on two diatribes. 
about why I shouldn't be. And the other thing, like, I do we no. wear do we wear clothes? Tyler, son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know if we need to wear clothes, but it sure feels weird. You know, with my dick hanging out, whatever that is, I don't even know what it's called. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what? All right. So, I'm we, done. yeah, done. we're done here. What? Um, All right. Where else is there to go? Next to, next, next, um, next <laughs> off here, off topic. I said everything I needed to say. All right, so Ever. I think it's time. Hey, Tyler, can you do me a favor? Mm-hmm. Can you uh, can you play some sad music? Uh, just like a sad, like... Let me tell you a story. Dead. Somebody's fucking dead. That's oh. Snyderverse. Oh. 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 It's dead. I Good. Guess. Kind okay. of. Well, we already talked about how hey, we... Hey, listen, Rebel Moon is all the rage, so why the well, fuck are we living ta- in the past, Snyder Knots? That's what we're ta- calling them, that's Snyder what Knots. That's what we're talking about. Which is way too cool of a name for yeah, those fucking take idiots. Take it back. I don't... If your name is Snyder, you can have it. Snyder fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. You can have Snyder Knots. But Snyder... Snyder f- dicks. Okay. So, in a recent interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Zack Snyder... Uh, he's you know doing press for Rebel Moon. Oh, thank God. Um, well, he do was, we have to watch that? <laughs> I kind of want to because <laughs> I kind of like to watch every Zack Snyder movie because I at least respect that the man commits to something. It's not his fault that his fans are such fucking fuckholes, but yeah. he did encourage some of that shit. Yeah, and that's what really so anyway soured uh, me on him. He did a they did like a big profile on him uh, com- uh, promoting the movie for the Hollywood Reporter. Mm. Uh, so they it kind of spanned his whole career. It's actually a pretty good article, but yeah, it kind of goes through his whole career and and how he's kind of always been like d- different and. Well, I don't want to call him an auteur. Yeah, he's not. Because, well, first of all, I think that term is stupid. Um, no, that's not true. I don't think the term is stupid. It's a word. But I mean, like, I hate that idea of, like... Because sometimes some directors use that title and let it get to their heads and treat people like shit, i.e. Stanley Kubrick. Um, also, I will say this about Zach. No, everybody that's worked with him has said he's great. Like they yeah, never complain yeah. about him. I mean, Kubrick has made some excellent movies, but by all accounts, he was a fucking dick. Uh, base, uh, the shit I Just saw, how asshole. he treated um, Shelley Duvall. Yeah, the way he oh, treated dude. her during that movie, I was like, fuck this guy. But anyway, in that context, <laughs> got obviously we know why the performance is so good in that movie by her because she is legitimately terrified in real life. She's terrorized by that dude. Right. Um, she was losing chunks of hair and shit. Yeah, she was stressed. I mean, but yes. anyway, that's a different story. So, here's a quote. So good for Zach for not being a dick like Cooper. Yeah. So Snyder was asked about James Gunn's DCU. And also there's this fake narrative that had been going around by the Snyder fucks uh that that Snyder they Snyder dicks. <laughs> they were um Kind of spinning this narrative that Snyder and Gunn were like beefing because James Gunn was taking over DC and all this shit. Here's proof that it isn't because all, sn- another thing too. This is how you, uh, you know they're friends because whenever James Gunn was given the opportunity to talk down about the DCEU or Snyder, he always took the high road and he said he's my friend. Like he's like he never said anything bad about those movies. Never said anything. So Snyder said, "Quote." I called him and said I wish all the best for him. I told him I wanted it to work. And I think that's important that he says that because he I, I hate to tell you this, guys, but Zack Snyder has moved on and you should too. Yes. It's over, man. That, they threw you the fucking bone with the Snyder cut and that was yes. it. What I was going to say is that by the time James Gunn had t- took over... Snyder was long. He fucking he wanted nothing gone, to do with dude, Warner Brothers. Gone. He was done with them. I'm happy for Zack Snyder. And here's the other thing too. Again, it's not his fault that these fucking douchebags. And yes, he did encourage, but I think on 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 accident. I don't think he meant to. I think he meant to do something else, and it was taken a certain way, and it was perceived that he was kind of encouraging it. Here's the thing. By all accounts, he's a good dude. 
He makes entertaining movies. I whatever you want to say about Watchmen, it's a fairly faithful adaptation. Chris, in this same article, uh, it mentions that Christopher Nolan said that Watchmen was ahead of its time, and I think you know it is true. It because we're we were living in. That's what Nolan said in his quote. He said, it would be interesting to see someone do something like this now in a post-Avengers world. Because right. it really was a weird deconstruction of the genre. Before it was a genre. Which is what's so why that story has always been so great. And, and is, yeah, just think that happening. Like I remember seeing trailers for that when I was at a screening for The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing the trailer being interested, but I never read it, never known anything about I it. I knew all about it, yeah. So I was super hyped but about it. But there is a funny theme that keeps running throughout that article is like every time he wanted to make a movie, he always wants an R-rated movie. Like he always wants to be R-rated. I've never seen Sucker Punch, which somebody told me is bad. I don't like Sucker Punch. It's, okay. it's not a good movie. It's all flash. That's um, what I've heard is that it's all like there's no real substance. And I to said it. ad nauseum on this show, the motherfucker knows how to shoot action. I'm yeah. not saying he doesn't make amazing action set pieces. There's like Justice League had some fucking insane. Like, uh, was it too long? Sure, but that uh, the Snyder this, cut was great. The Steppenwolf fight in Themyscira in the Snyder cut is fucking awesome, dude. Th- the Snyder Cut is really, really good. It makes it actually makes like a, a nice capper to the DC extended, whatever you want to call it. And that whatever, should have been the end, right? But whatever you want to say about Snyder, he had a vision for the DC whatever, and he wanted it to work. He didn't want it to fail. Do you think he really wanted to lose a member of his family during all of that? You know what I mean, like. The fact that he tried, I remember seeing the first trailer for Man of Steel and being like super With fucking that Hans Zimmer stoked. score. Woo. Dude, that part where he like. Yeah, the I flight lo- song. I, no, no. I loved when he put his foot. The, like they kind of explained that, like. How he pushes off. The- I guess. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That yeah. first, very first trailer and all the dirt comes starts. Yeah. yeah, he. I mean, I was excited because it was like, this is a cool take on Superman, right? Yeah. I mean. It's. I'm. I'm sorry for all of you that think that there's some conspiracy against Zack Snyder, but there isn't. Um, he's had some tragedy in his life, but he he still makes really entertaining movies, and I hope he keeps doing it. Whether I'm gonna watch him or not, we'll see. But yeah, I'm interested. In I Re- wish. I wish him the best. I'm interested in Rebel Moon and what he can if do. If I with had that. Netflix, I would. But somebody forgot to tell me how to use their Netflix while they were gone. Pre- pre- you press the button when I came over to watch you your turn, dog. You hit the button and sure. turn, you turn. I didn't get to watch the killer. Turn it on. And it there goes my long box. Thanks to the movie. Uh, uh, also regarding the future, just in case the Snyder fucks uh, didn't didn't hear him loud and clear. This is directly from the Hollywood Reporter article. Snyder says that the chapter that chapter of his life is now closed, and it would be difficult to coax him to reopen it. If his buddy Gunn called him and invited him back to DC, he might consider doing a Dark Knight Returns adaptation, but only a true representation of the graphic novel. If Marvel rang, he might think a beat about a Daredevil and Electra movie. Maybe mm, that would be interesting. Adapting Frank Miller's Electra Lives Again, mm. but that's it. Uh, and then uh, they asked about Star Wars again because uh, this came from a, a failed Star Wars pitch. <clears throat> before Disney got it, and he said, no, I don't think so. Those guys have a handle on the brand. So he's done. Move on. It's over. Find something else to hitch your wagon to. And I don't see or how... Or sociopathy. If, like, I understand being a fan of a director, and I understand being a fan of a style, but like, this is just insane. And and the fact that it I've is never still been like going this. on... I wouldn't even be like this about you, and you're like my best friend. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, does I, that make sense? No, I don't think. So yeah. why would I do it about somebody I don't know? No matter how I much of a fan I am of them, I don't think how cult like they don't understand how cultish they really sound. I have a friend, and I won't say his name, and he's a fan of a band that I grew up with, and he's the. I have two friends. One is Just a two? one is a fan of a very big jam band. Most of the members are dead now, but they're still touring. And and I don't understand it. I'm I'm talking about the guy who buys like all the bootlegs and shit and and like follows them on tour. My other friend is a fan of a uh, grunge band, 
that's still around and is the same way with that band. And I just, and I had a friend when I was growing up, when A Perfect uh, Circle came out, who was like that about Tool and Maynard, because he was in both bands, Maynard James Keenan. And I don't understand that. I've been fans of, of a band. I would love people to be fans of my music that way, of course. Huh. Right? Always got to plug your music. I'm serious. I'm saying, yeah. like, what I like people to be that fanatic about my music. But I have never been fanatic about maybe the Minnesota Vikings. I think is the most fanatic I've gotten about anything. Not even America. <laughs> I mean, this niche country, man? No, man. Nah, man. Nah. So, uh, real quick aside, um, I was at work the other day, and they have pods for your uh, K-Rig, and the brand is is McCafe. Uh, McDonald's uh, bu- coffee. Bu- 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 McDonald's fucking coffee. And I wanted to take a picture of it and post it on Twitter and say, congratulations, you're so consumed by capitalism that you crave a niche coffee from a niche restaurant in a niche country in a niche part of America of earth history because like it or not we're in a niche part of America of, of, of earth history what? That's, that's perfect Tyler real quick oh I thought uh, we were recording that's why I was swearing so much I thought it was funny <laughs> fuck you oh that's why you you berate me when we're not recording you think it's funny no uh <laughs> listen there you dummy you fucking okay. Wow. Um. Well, this is some news. I don't know if you'll be interested in it. Um. But there was just we just got a first look at the Fallout TV series. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So I don't really understand the the, the, the my stepkids that I oh, had were man. into that game. If you want to, if you, <laughs> I don't understand the concept. You're gonna give me an idea. It. You're gonna give me an idea. But no, I don't want you to take five minutes and tell me about all about no, it. No, I'm not gonna tell you the whole lore. Good. But no. Uh, <laughs> well, don't d- fucking start with me. If you, well, I was just wondering if this is something that you would watch because you kind of surprised me watching The Last of Us and you never played that game. And so it was a good story. Yeah. So if it was if it was something that be also you if might, you believe the people who comment on our videos were totally shilling for you know whatever they think we're shilling I wish for. Wish I was. And man. since there was you know we um, wouldn't have to do a this lesbian in my character in that show, I must have liked it. But you know what I mean? You know that. I whole think it was show. directed by Tiki Watiti. Um, but but I just no yeah. This excites me. That the I think that at the very least. They understand the extent, the aesthetic of it, and, okay. and and what that's important. The like, because twisted the real feel of it what was it twisted what metal twisted metal. Okay, that yeah. came out earlier this year, right? Yeah, I and I you liked said it. that it was very because it was very faithful to the game. They understood the game. It's not. They understood the tone of the first right. couple games, where right. it was a little bit more ridiculous and over the top. And okay, good. Uh, whereas, like, there's twisted metal. Didn't Zack Snyder do his twisted? Metal? You some people will argue with me about that sure whatever but what well it, but here's the thing there's it, we're in a weird place with uh video game adaptations because we have on the very high end we have the last of us and the very low end we have halo and i try <laughs> dude i tried so f- i, I want to go back and look at those videos again because i i tried so hard to reason with myself that, like, no, Jake, you're going to like this. And I did not like that fucking While show. you're watching the show, too. Yeah, and I'm doing it for the uh, YouTube, like, doing the videos. And I'm like, I just, I'm trying. I can't. Yeah. Um, but we're, and then there's The Last of Us where, like, that's incredible. That's, you know, of course it's great. They got well the people done. that did the, well the game. And then, yeah, there's, like, in the middle, you got Twisted Metal. I never watched The Witcher. But, like, there's, there's, we're at a weird place where there is a scale. And I'm obviously hoping for it to be something. Well, shit, Super Mario Brothers movie is a fucking video game adaptation, technically. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's so there's such a large pool from animation to like live action. Well, I mean, fuck. Yeah. I mean, you could. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the long. Well, I want to. <sighs> I want to. There's one more thing I want. I didn't to want to say it because I want you to be able to do the well, fucking there's a f- sounder. Two more things I wanted to do. Okay. About this, these video, these clips. Uh, I've got to see 
Walton Goggins as what this what the series calls a ghoul. So in fall, and I'll be very brief. I'm not gonna fucking bore you. Well, here we go. Um, <laughs> I'm I, just sitting here. I like the idea of me explaining Fallout Lord to you, being like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" Every time I talk. But in Fallout Lord, the ghouls are people that are irradiated and just have been decomposing for two. Because the story, every Fallout story, takes place around 200 years after the bombs drop. Okay. Because there's people in vaults and they are topside. But the people that didn't get to be in vaults, the poor people, the poorer people, the, either they died or they became ghouls, is what they call them. There's feral ghouls that are pretty much like zombies, but then there's ghouls that are like people that we, they are kind of immortal in the lore. They're not really, but like they've been around for 200 years because they're just irradiated. They're just, they themselves are. And it's interesting to see Walton Goggins in it playing a ghoul, huh. which excites me about it. Yeah, there's so much weird shit. And that's, honestly, that's the biggest thing to wrap it up. That's what's interesting to me is, like, how well they're going to balance the tone because there are some very serious, like, uh, politics to the games, but there's also a lot of really dark, fun humor. Um, And I hope they can capture that in the show. And honestly, Amazon's been on a win streak lately. I haven't finished Invincible yet, and when we do, that will be a future long box, but... Uh, the boys, Gen V, Invincible. They've been on a, I'm, a I'm fucking finished, Reacher. I'm finishing that up right They've now. They've been on a win streak lately, man. They, <laughs> when they, is they, season two coming out soon? December 15th. <laughs> awesome. I'm but, so uh, glad I got caught up right in time. Oh, yeah. But that Tyler, it's finally time. Oh, my God. Long. Oh. It's a long box. Gets um, me every time. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to go with one that I was going to do last week. And uh, Cheers. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. We didn't Why even didn't get to that. Why didn't we record that conversation? Let's not <laughs> Save it get for the end. Because, <laughs> honestly, I'm just so still broken about it. I don't want to revisit it. <laughs> I'm Years and years and years of fucking therapy ahead for me. I've anyway, been lied to. So, um, my brother sent me a text a couple weeks ago, and he said, Hey, What's this show is mouth? back. This show is back on Hulu, or it's on Hulu now, and I was like, uh, oh my god, I haven't watched or thought about that show in a long time, like ages, but I loved that show when it was on, and that show, ladies and gentlemen, what is, is it? What wait, 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 wait. The show that introduced uh, uh, the world to Bruce Willis, Moonlighting. Moonlighting! So, Glenn Gordon Karen is this producer, and he he created this moonlighting, and it's about uh, Sybil Shepard is this uh, retired uh, cover model, uh, supermodel, whatever you want to call it, um, and she's made all her money off of this. She's known as the Blue Moon Girl from this particular brand of shampoo she's shilled for or whatever, but she's been retired for many years, invested. She's well off. She doesn't have to worry about money ever again for the rest of her life. She's in her 30s, whatever. She wakes up one day, and her entire house staff is, like, leaving and breaking stuff and, like, pissed off at her because their checks bounced. And she comes to find out that she's had everything, her accountant stole everything from her. So she has to liquidate everything she has and go back to one particular business and it's a detective agency the blue moon detective agency run by david addison played by bruce willis and bruce willis david addison is the typical like i'm not serious about anything um i'm very just you know whatever and i'm joking around all the time and he's cool as fuck like david addison is the coolest guy ever right and glenn gordon karen created this show one thing that was a problem with this show is that every show costs like equivalent of a million dollars today. What are you doing? I'm listening to you. You're like doing something. I don't know. Scratching um, my foot, bro. Oh, but they're like uh, a show that would take a million dollars for each episode today is how much it cost back in the 80s. So it was incredibly expensive. It was incredibly difficult to film and to produce, right? And on top of that, The entire story centers around Sybil Shepard's character, who is top billing when the show starts, and Bruce Willis's character, who is second billing, not liking each other. 
And almost immediately, it is a breakout hit. It is the breakout hit role for Bruce Willis. So he becomes a huge fucking star. Die Hard a couple years after, I think, the show ended, cemented all that. But it's a breakout role. And Sybil Shepard does not like this. So, off camera, they are fighting, right? They hate each other. But they have to work together. So... Watching the first couple episodes of that first season, it went like four or five, and the whole will they, won't they was broken in like season three or four because they did it. The two characters did it. Oh, yeah. But then they all <laughs> they also are very, very meta about it because they actually have like um, uh, a TMZ type show come into the Blue Moon Detective Agency to talk to Maddie and David about why they won't speak to each other anymore. Does that make sense? Even though yeah. the story was Sybil Shepard and Bruce Willis. Does that, do you get it? You get it kind of how meta and yeah. like just over, it's just, it's insane. And watching these two people, these two actors act like they don't like each other. You're like sitting there going like, this is either really good acting or really poor acting. Like they really do absolutely hate each other. And it's fascinating to watch. It's Bruce Willis at the top of his fucking game. If you love Bruce Willis, you got to give yourself a reason to watch Moonlighting. It's really, really good. I've watched about the first five episodes. In addition, it's a pretty good detective mystery show. Like, each episode has, like, a kind of mystery that they have to solve and whatnot. But then it's got also the element of uh, romance and comedy. Um, and I still have a huge crush on Sybil Shepard because I just think she's, like, the most gorgeous woman. All right, are you done? I highly recommend uh, Moonlighting. It's on Hulu, and, uh, yeah. I, I think it's a window into a, it's a really weird show. They did one show that took in place entirely in the Middle Ages. Was it called Moon Nighting? Like, because it, because they're knights. Oh, Moon Night, like Knights of like, the Round Table. Ting! Swords and shoes. Swords and sorcery and Harry Potter! Spotted Dick! <laughs> All right, so uh, my long box is Modern Family. Yeah, I've been binging the shit out of that huh, show. Huh, okay. <laughs> well, because there's so many shows. This is what's funny about life. <laughs> you start getting a backlog of things that you want to get to, whether it's movies, whether it's TV shows, whether it's video games. I got such a big backlog of shit. Well, did you did you ever watch this show before you continue? When it was like on TV, like no. once a week, I never watched it when I was on the air. Really? Okay. Just wanted. I, to... I had seen like random episodes. It seems like a show that you guys would have watched together, and you guys have been together for long enough that. Well, it was. On, it's been syndicated all over the place, so I've seen like random episodes at like a hotel or something. Like if I was staying somewhere and it was just on the TV, mm. or if I was watch somebody was watching it, you know, I never myself actively seeked it out. Um, but it just happened when my wife Neither was I. watching something on Peacock and it just like recommended it. She's like, all right, let's just see where this goes. Cause I don't know if you do this, but sometimes when you have an app and like Spotify or something, sometimes you're like, just let Spotify pick the song, see what happens. Absolutely. So, so you know, sometimes I've do that on a, your streaming apps. Yeah. No, I, there's, um, Hulu actually, I've, I got back and a lot of different recommendations of like, uh, um, like Korean language. Hmm. Um, uh, like shows from Korea, yeah, and I'm like, that's interesting. Uh, that I would be recommended that I'm gonna go check some stuff out. It is like legitimately a funny show. Um, it is because you, you, funny enough, um, you and I were talking about multi camera sitcoms and how, like, for me, there was this big veil broke. Like, I knew they were filmed in front of an audience, but like, the veil was really broken when like high def became standard. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, oh, they are really doing this on a soundstage. They're really doing this for an audience. You yeah, know? We're not going to get into the cheers. No, we're not getting into that. But but there was also this when, like, I remember, and I... Why Ted Danson? One of my favorite shows, Arrested Development, was like a change where it was like doing a... Oh, such a good show. Doing a single camera, no no audience, yeah. shot like a movie, comedy... And I think so fucking it, good. it works so well. And then this this show comes out a few years later after it's and it ends its run. Then ABC has this come out, and it's again a similar style. It's the single shot camera. It's shot like a uh, documentary. It's a mockumentary, mm. but it also is funny because with the testimonials and stuff. 
The only thing, but I've never seen any indication that, like, it's weird because it's shot like a, a mockumentary, but at least with The Office. In the later seasons, it becomes more and more, like, evident that, like, oh, there's a crew there that they have that's well, yeah, supposed to be the, the, the last, film crew. That's why the last season of The Office is unfucking watchable Stop it. Un- but, but, yes, we had the storyline with, like, the key grip and whatever in that final season. So far, I've only watched about two seasons of it. I have not actually ever seen a reference that this is a TV show that's going to be seen by other people. Like, it's almost like the the testimonial rooms or the confession rooms, whatever you want to talk. It's almost like it's the character speaking direct. It's the character's own subconscious, almost, because it's it's the character speaking directly to you. That makes sense. Yeah. Breaking the fourth wall, but. It's never addressed, like, there's never any indication, like, oh, this is going to be on TV tonight, which, you know what I mean? Like, there's right. That at, the, thing. at the beginning of The Office, there is, like, a little on screen thing, or the, it's, like, it's it's established very early on in, in the U.S. version of The Office. I don't know about the British version, but that, hey, they're, these guys are filming us, so come on. And yeah. I'm sure it's, like, it's an, inter- but it is. That's an interesting way of looking at it. It's a, I don't even know if that, and again, that could be blown away later in the show i like that like, version but i i'd like to think that was the interpretation mm. but i think that would be and that's what i think you ever of, hear of a show called herman's head no we're not gonna we'll talk that. about it off the air but uh there's a there's a couple like the cast is so good and, and it's so well done um uh ty burrell as phil dunphy is great um air uh I think so it's Eric Vergara, Stone Street. He, oh, the, yeah. Uh, both the those guys are amazing. Cam, yeah. Uh, I love his whole football background and, like... Yeah, like, he's when, an athlete. And he's a clown. Yeah. He really <laughs> likes being... And, dude, he is so fucking funny. Like, it's just so good. And, like I said, Ty Burrell, uh, Julie Bowen's great. She plays She was in life. fucking... Hap- uh, no. She was Happy Gilmore. Yes. Yeah. She looks... In, and it's like, whoa, wow. She's still... Very beautiful. It's also um, weird because well, you got uh, Ed O'Neill, who's fucking great <laughs> in everything. Um, it, well cast. Um, I think that it 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 executes its cheesy sentimental sentimental moments well, and um, it it manages to be very funny by also playing within network TV rules. And yeah, I think there's th- yeah. I think that's uh, a testament to how good the writing is. And it's it won like a bunch of fucking endings. Of course. Of but, course. No, I've been binging it. And I think what I love about it is that, yeah, it's a 22-minute show. I, the problem with there those are so is many that there's great... 24 episodes in, in every season. season. So it's like not that much less time. Yeah, but you don't think about it. You can burn through a oh, good chunk yeah. of a season in a Sunday afternoon, buddy. Let me tell you. Oh, trust me. I know. Yeah, That's why I like it. It's bite size. I'm going to eat it up. You know, <laughs> that is where I was saying that was where we should end it. Is num num num. That's it. We're done. So Tyler, I was gonna ask you not next week, week after that, December tenth. Tenth? I have no idea. I, don't know. I was thinking we should do Die Hard December. Yes. Watching. We're not gonna watch is the tenth the fifth a movie. Sunday. A Monday, I think, because I know the twelfth is Sunday. Tuesday. Just Sunday. Yeah. Are we gonna have to start getting together Sundays so we can watch Die Hard together? Die Hard December. Die Hard December. But we're not watching that fifth sure movie. You get your pretzels and your mustard and onions. Give me a <laughs> martini while I watch a group of fallen. That was awesome. Should we uh, have a Nakatomi Tower? I'm not the one who just got butt fucked on national television. Glass? Who gives a shit about glass? <laughs> one of the best lines from the first one. Ho ho ho! I have a machine gun now. Classic. So yeah, we. I think it should be the 10th, oh, 17th, I, uh, 24th. Guess we're gonna years. need some uh, new FBI guys. We're not watching uh, a Good Day to Die Hard. Fuck that movie. Um, I, I'm Agent Johnson. This is Special Agent Johnson. No relation. Oh, panel off, Jobby! With Jake and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs>